name's Liz, I'm the baker that sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you are a subscriber. As always, it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey. So today's video is going to be one of my Sunday sewing catch-ups and we're on episode 39. So as usual, I've got a range of things to share with you. So I have got some um, makes, so things that I've been sewing this week. I've got some fabric to share with you. Um, I wanted to update you on a printing service that I used. Um, I've got a story to tell you from school um, and then I've got a sewing challenge to talk about. So before I dive into all of those things, I'll let you know what I'm wearing and it is the first day of Me Made May. So I am going to be taking part in Me Made May, but I'm going to be sharing my outfits in my stories. That's just, um, it kind of fits into my um, sort of daily life and weekly life, especially with work. Um, my school day is quite busy and my day is quite long, so I know that I won't get a chance to always necessarily post my grid. So I just thought sharing it in my stories would be um, a much quicker and easier way of sharing my outfit. So I've shared this over on Instagram already. It's a Tilly in the Buttons Freya top. I absolutely love the Freya top and I've actually made one of those this week, which I'm going to talk about. And then it's paired with the By Hand London Leo dungarees and I've made a couple of pairs of these. And one of the things that I want to do during the month of May is get out some of those older makes. And I made this probably about a year ago, I think. And I haven't worn them for absolutely ages. This is something that would work for the springtime with a short sleeve top. It's a little bit chilly today, which is why I've got my um, Freya that's three quarter length um, in this gorgeous mustard jersey fabric that I've from Abercorn Fabrics. I'll stand up and show you the dungarees, but I will put a picture in because it's quite tricky to show them because they're quite voluminous um, and quite oversized and really roomy so it can be quite tricky to show on camera but you've got this bib and then the um, trouser part is sort of gathered into the bib this gorgeous scoop detail here and then you've got the same bib on the back and then it ties on the shoulder um, obviously on both sides they are really voluminous and billowy and very oversized so they are super comfortable to wear and then they have got, if I can show you, elastic on the bottom and um, to create this really billowy leg as well. They're super comfortable, um, which is really important to me. I love wearing clothes that are really comfortable. I struggle with bloating and anything touching my tummy can sometimes hurt. So for me, it's really important that I've got quite a lot of room around there. Or if I have got a waistband around that area, um, it's a waistband that's quite soft. Um, so these are really comfortable, so that's what I'm wearing. I'm not sure what I'm going to wear tomorrow because it's bank holiday Monday and what I'm planning to do, uh, we've had quite a busy weekend, so we are planning a pyjama day tomorrow. So I might wear my um, Nina Lee Piccadilly pyjamas um, because we're going to allow each other to have the day at home. I'm going to do lots and lots of sewing. Um, my eldest loves Marvel films, so she's going to watch those with um, her dad. And then my youngest has gotten into diamond painting. Um, so she's got a couple of diamond paintings on the go at the moment. So she's going to be um, trying to finish. I think she's got one that she's about three quarters of the way through. So she's going to try and get that finished tomorrow as well. We may get dressed and go for a little walk. It depends on what the weather's going to do. But I'm really excited about having a whole day of sewing before we go back to work on Tuesday. It feels like a real treat because we've only been back at work for a couple of weeks. So that is what I'm wearing. Um, I'll start with the lovely story from school. So I hadn't worn my, I haven't got it here, but I have got the scrap of fabric. But um, I hadn't worn my rainbow bomber jacket using this gorgeous quilting fabric um, to work yet. But this week, the weather was looking like it would be okay. It wasn't gonna rain. Uh, it was a little bit chilly, but the sun did come out at points. So I thought it was the perfect opportunity to wear it to school. And my class absolutely loved it. I thought they would because they love things that are shiny and sparkly and they love things that are like rainbows as well. Um, they're definitely a class um, that are right up my street. We all seem to love the same sorts of things. And um, so it was really lovely to see their reaction to me wearing this. Um, had lots of stroking. Um, I was described as a mermaid. Um, what do they say? You're like a rainbow mermaid, which was lovely. So I did have some scraps of this left over. So I've got this piece, uh, which is quite big. So I'm gonna see if I can turn that into a little bag that I can use. But then I had other like random off cuts. So what I've done is I've cut it up into pieces and I'm gonna take these to work um, and give them to the children so they can have their own little piece of the sort of rainbow mermaid fabric is what they've decided it is. So I've just cut out little squares for them and I've got enough 
for a few spares left over as well. So I'm gonna take that into work next week and I'm really excited about giving them their own little square of fabric. I think they'll really enjoy it. I take all my scraps into school already and lots of them end up just filling like cardboard boxes with scraps or they'll use them to make like little beds for the teddies that we've got at school and things. They're really imaginative. So I think if I give them all a little scrap of that quilting fabric, um, I think they're gonna really enjoy it and um, sort of be quite creative with the fabric too. And then hopefully with the last little off cut, um, I might be able to turn it into a cute little bag that I can use as well. And then there's another little boy that I'm working with at the moment um, in another year group who is really enjoying just going through all the fabric scraps that I've got and he'll take them out and say this is for a teddy or this is for um, whoever it is that he's got at home. So I've said that I'm going to bring in some needles and thread and we're going to have got making a little bag using some of the scraps as well because he's really keen to learn to sew. So I'm looking forward to having that little project and um, hopefully teaching him some sewing skills as well, which is really exciting. So what have I been up to this week? I have been sewing a couple of things. I had some baby clothes that I was finishing off in my last Sunday sewing catch up. I just had to um, top stitch the neckline and I had to hem the sleeves and hem the, the skirt and also the trousers, I think. So I've got two bundles of baby clothes to show you. Completely finished. And then I've got these gorgeous little um, handmade tags I'm going to put with the clothes and then on the back you can fill in like I've just written what age the clothes were what type of fabric it was and then at the bottom you can circle um the washing the drying and the ironing instructions as well so I have finished the strawberry sweatshirt times two um, and then inside I've used these gorgeous little labels I'll show you in a second but they're by um little rosy cheeks I've got one left actually so I can hold that label up for you but it says you deserve to dream and I just thought they were absolutely perfect for putting inside baby clothes so that's what I've used the labels for I'm going to order some more of those because they're absolutely adorable so I've just put a little label in the sweatshirt there um, so that's the strawberry sweatshirt completely finished and ready to send off um, and then the tangerine trousers again completely finished they're hemmed now ready to send off and then the teeny beanie hat which is my favorite thing um, I just absolutely love. It's just so cute. That's ready to send off. And then I've got exactly the same here. So the little trousers, cute little hat, um, the little strawberry sweatshirt there. And then I also had a Poppy and Jazz pansy dress to finish as well. So there it is, completely finished and hemmed. So I managed to get the right colour thread. And I think the thread goes really perfectly, actually. You can well, you can see it because of the stitching, but the colour just matches really nicely. And then I had a little um, sort of off cut of fabric that I bought from the lovely Jen, who is Ginger Thread Girl. She was doing a de-stash. And as soon as I saw this fabric, I just thought it had to become some really cute baby clothes. I just thought it had baby clothes all over it. And it was only an off cut. I think I had less than a metre of the fabric. And I've turned it into a cute little strawberry sweatshirt. How adorable is that? And it's, I love the fabric. It's got these sleeping acorns all over it and then these gorgeous leaves all over it too. And I just, I love the scale of the fabric and the scale of that print. And I just think it works so nicely for that um, strawberry sweatshirt. So I've done three to six months in that one. Um, and then I also had enough to do another pansy dress um, because I think it's such a cute um, sort of dress pattern. So there it is in the gorgeous little acorn fabric. I just think it's absolutely gorgeous and so cute. And that fabric just really um, made me smile when I saw it. Those acorns are so cute. And then I also had just enough to make a teeny beanie tie knot hat. And again, in that fabric, I just think it's adorable. So I'm really excited to gift those to my friend who's just had a little girl. Um, and then the other clothes, I've got one set that's going to go to a friend who's had a boy and then the other set's going to go to a friend who's waiting to have her baby. So I'm really enjoying sewing up baby clothes at the moment. I just think they're super cute, they're tiny, they sew up really quickly and it's just a really lovely thing to gift on to somebody as well. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing cute photos of babies in the clothes that I've made for them. So that's what I've been making um, the baby clothes, apart from the acorn baby clothes, the others, I just needed to top stitch and hem them. But the acorn set, I hadn't even started on that. 
Um, so I'm really pleased that I've managed to get those finished and they're going to go off in the post. I'm actually going to see my friend um, hopefully next week or the week after so I can give her those clothes. So the next two things that I've sewn this week, I wasn't expecting to sew up, but I have been going through my wardrobe as I've been thinking about Me Made May. Um, and I realised that I didn't have any white t-shirts. Um, I was thinking particularly about having a long sleeve white t-shirt and a short sleeve white t-shirt to go with some of the things that I've got in my wardrobe that might just need a plain top. Um, so I had some fabric in my stash from the Sewist fabric shop and I've had it in my stash for a while. Um, I had 1.7 metres so I knew that that would be enough to get two tops out of. Um, I haven't really sewn any, I mean I've sewn this but this is like a mustard colour. But in terms of like white garments, I'm quite a messy eater. I manage to slop things down myself all the time. I am quite clumsy. I kneel in things. When I'm at work, I'll like splodge paint down me. I'll sit in glue. I'm just that type of person. So I've always been a bit hesitant to make anything in white just because I was worried that I would slop something down me and then it would be stained forever. I've actually managed to stain um, my lilac denim Yanta overalls. I put a picture in of what they look like. But I was eating some, I made some, um, it was a recipe called Persian noodle soup. It had like a broth that was made from loads of mashed up and chopped up fine herbs. So it had like mint, coriander, I think there might have been a bit of basil in there. So it was quite a green based broth and I managed to slop it down my dungarees. I've washed them, um, but I wore them to work so I couldn't get them in the wash straight away. So there's a tiny bit of the stain left over. So if anyone's got any top tips for getting it out of the lilac denim, please let me know. Because I managed to dribble it down where the bib is, so it's quite a notable, notable place. But anyway, I did decide to take the plunge and sew up some white basic tops. So I've just got a white short sleeve t-shirt. It's a bit creased, I need to iron it. Because um, I pre-washed the fabric and then I just cut it out and it's still a little bit creased. But I will iron them before I wear them. And then I've also got, this is inside out from me um, hemming it, I've literally just finished it like 10 minutes before I started filming. Um, and then I've got a exactly the same top, but in a white, so the Freya top by Tinning the Buttons in a long sleeve. And I think that will keep me warm at work whilst the weather's still not quite sure what it wants to do. Just in a white cotton jersey, the patterns that I used were both Tinning the Buttons patterns. So I made the short sleeve top using the Tabitha t-shirt, which is the one that Tilly's wearing. So from the Make It Simple book, it's a pattern that I've sewn up hundreds of times. Well, not hundreds, that's quite an exaggeration. It's a pattern that I've sewn up loads and loads before and I really love it. I love the fit on me as well. Um, so that's what it looks like. It's called the Tabitha t-shirt. Um, and then here are the line drawings. So you can do a short sleeved, you can do a three quarter length or you can do a long. And I've gone for the short sleeves. Um, and then the other pattern is from the stretch book and it is the Fry Freya um, top, which is a long sleeve uh, top, or you can turn it into a dress. So it's the Freya sweater and dress. And I'll get the line drawings to show you as well. And um, so these are the line drawings. So you can do sort of elbow length sleeves or long sleeves, or you can turn it into a dress. And I've just done this version and it's got a mock neck band on it as well, which I really like. It's a really comfortable top and it's great for layering. So that's what I had in my mind really when I was sewing up those two uh, makes, thinking about like layering. So I've got a couple of pairs of these dungarees that I would still want to wear like a top on underneath. Um, so the t-shirts will come in handy for that. I've got some pinafores. Um, I've got some blouses that um, I could layer up. So if the weather is still a little bit chilly, which next week it looks like it's going to rain quite a bit, I'm, I might still want to wear some of my blouses, but I could pop a t-shirt on underneath, then pop a blouse on and then pop on a jacket so I'm nice and warm because I do get really cold at work. My classroom's really cold for some reason. Um, and especially when I'm out in the garden with the children as well, I want to make sure that I stay nice and cosy and warm. So I'm really pleased that I've got two basic t-shirts now that are really going to add to my wardrobe. Um, and I think I'm going to continue just sewing a few plain things so that I can pair them with some, like I've got a load of things in my wardrobe that are all patterned. I've got a few more plain tops. I've got about four or five plain Freya tops, but I need some more Tabitha t-shirts that are in plain colours as well, just to maximise my wardrobe. But I've really enjoyed going through my wardrobe and reminding myself of the old makes that I've got. And I'm going to try and wear something different every day in the month of May and share it over on Instagram. So I'm looking forward to that. And then the other thing that I've sewn up was a completely unexpected make. 
um, but I shared two fabrics last week and I feel really motivated when I go through my stash and share fabrics and ask for um, suggestions on what to turn them into. So I shared this, I still can't remember what type of fabric it is, but it feels like a really light gauze fabric. But anyway, I shared this fabric in my last Sunday sewing catch up and I asked for suggestions on what to turn it into. And I got quite a few suggestions of various things like floaty dresses. And I've actually turned it into one of my favourite wrap dresses. And I felt really inspired by the sewing bee. Really enjoyed watching it. I'm so excited that it's back on our screens. Um, but one of the contestants used the Bella Loves um, floor dress, which is a wrap dress with these gorgeous ruffles. And I absolutely love ruffles. Um, so that is exactly what I used this fabric for. I've turned it into the Bella Loves floor dress thinking about my summer wardrobe. And I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. I think the stripy fabric really lends itself well to that pattern. And then what I've decided to do on the bottom with the ruffle is I've got the um, stripes going the other way. So there's a bit of a contrast with those um, stripes as well. Um, I omitted the pockets. So you can put pockets in this pattern if you want to, but I decided not to. I felt like it was busy enough um, with that gorgeous stripy fabric. So I will put pictures in of me wearing this, but I did think the plain tops that I've sewn up, I could wear underneath this dress um, so that I can max maximise the use of the dress whilst the weather's still a little bit chilly. Um, I still don't think I would wear it to work. I think it's a little bit too fancy to wear to work. But in terms of sort of wearing it at the weekend, if I go out and meet friends or go out with my family, I think it'd be a really beautiful, um, light, swishy dress that I could wear um, just out and about. And I think that's another approach that I'm going to have to my wardrobe during the month of May and not just during the month of May, but beyond that as well. Um, I don't know about you, but I've got a couple of things in my wardrobe where I reach for them and then I think mm, that's a bit too fancy for where I'm going today. Or I think that's a little bit too special to wear. I'm not going to wear it today. And then it ends up sitting in my wardrobe for like six months and I just don't wear it because at the back of my mind, I'm thinking it's too fancy or it's too special. Um, which is a shame because I think there's lots of things in my wardrobe that I should just wear um, and I don't mind. I think I've been shopping before where I've had something on that's perhaps a little bit too fancy for shopping. I've been to the supermarket with things that are just perhaps a little bit too fancy and um, particularly if I've worn something to school like we've had dress up days where I've worn I've got a Tilly and the Buttons indigo dress, which is like an Elsa themed dress. I'll put a picture in and I've been shopping to the supermarket wearing that because I've worn it to school for a dress up day and then I've had to go and get something on my way home. So I'm just going to embrace wearing the fancy or the makes in my wardrobe that I deem too nice to wear. Um, I'm just going to embrace wearing them and look at different ways of styling them. So it might be that I chuck on a jumper or I wear them with trainers to dress them down, perhaps. Um, I really want to look at some of those things in my wardrobe that I haven't had as much love because um, I hesitate pulling them out because I think that they're too nice. So that was everything that I've got sewn up this week. Quite a few things and a couple of unexpected makes that I think are going to really add to my wardrobe. The next thing I wanted to share with you was a fabric that has arrived. Um, and I saw this fabric on Stitch and Ink's website and on their Instagram stories and it is right up my street. It's a green coloured fabric. It's leopard print. And when I went to buy some, it had sold out. It sold out really quickly. So then I was stalking their website, stalking their stories to see when they got some more in and they actually got some more in. So I managed to buy three metres of it and it's absolutely beautiful. Um, and I'm really pleased that I've managed to get hold of some. I'm trying not to just impulse buy fabric. Um, so it's good that it was out of stock because then it made me really think, do I actually need it? And uh, the answer was yes. And I went and grabbed some. So it is this beautiful viscose. I love how that peach colour just really pops. It's almost like a sort of, um, what's the colour um, that I'm thinking of? A rose gold. That's what it reminds me of, like rose gold against the pops of black and then that dark green background. That is my favourite shade of green. It's absolutely beautiful. It feels really lovely and soft. It feels sort of um, really soft like a cotton lawn, but then when you open it up, it's got that beautiful drape that you would get from a viscose. And I'm really excited about turning it into something. I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna turn it into yet, but I do think it needs to be some kind of um, sort of beautiful dress of some sort. I'm not quite sure which dress yet. But I just love how that fabric moves. It's absolutely gorgeous. And that drape is just beautiful. And I've got three metres. So I've got enough 
um, to make perhaps a wrap dress or a dress that's got a gathered skirt and maybe a ruffle. Maybe the indigo or maybe the myosotis dress because that's one of my favourite um, dress patterns and I just think it's absolutely beautiful so I'm really pleased that I managed to get some of that fabric and the next thing I wanted to share I said right at the beginning that I was going to talk about my experience with the pattern printing company and um, so I decided to get I've written this down because I keep getting corrected on how to pronounce um, the name of this it's the new Friday pattern company pattern and it's the saguaro sat set I do hope I'm saying that correctly I've had loads of people comment helping me out on how to pronounce the name because I keep saying it wrong. So the Saguaro set, I bought it and I sent it off to get Copy Shop printed by Fabuloso. Really speedy service. And what I really love about Fabuloso is you can get your booklet printed with them too. And it's a really high quality booklet. So you've got this lovely color front and it's glossy. Um, and then they um, staple it into a booklet and it's got all of the information in there as you would expect. Um, with a booklet and the writing's not too tiny either um, and I really like having an instruction booklet that's one of the reasons why I like buying paper patterns because I like having the instruction booklet I think it was £2.50 uh, for the booklet to be printed um, and you can just choose to print the booklet if you don't want to print the um, if you don't want to get the pattern copy shop printed as well I got both done at the same time and then you get the pattern envelope that comes with it as well and I really love that they've printed it so it says the saguaro top and Friday Pattern Company, and then there's just some information on the front or the space on the front for you to fill in more information as well. Um, I find the website really easy to navigate. It's quite straightforward to upload your pattern. You just need to make sure, because I've done the mistake of this before, but they're lovely, they'll just email you and tell you that you didn't amend how many pages you need. You just need to make sure you make a note of how many pages the um, pattern will be printed onto. So for this set, I think it was three pages, I think. It was either two or three so I just had to make sure that when I'd uploaded the file I changed the number to two or three AO size pages and then it amends the price for you and then it also uploaded the booklet and then you can change it to do um, the booklet printing as well so I'm really pleased I have got this cut out and I'm going to share that at the end of the video um, because I'm treating myself to a sewing day tomorrow so I'm really hoping I can get my saguaro set printed as well I had a funny moment at school actually talking about um, sort of being able to pronounce it. playing a game with a couple of children and um, I was saying oh I came last again and the little one came up to me and said it's not last it's last you're saying it incorrectly and then we had a conversation about accents and I could say to them oh I wasn't actually born in London I was born in Manchester so there are some words that I say differently to you you say last but I say last um, I also say bath and I say castle um, and then we got on to talking about that and then there was another little one that I was playing the game with as well and they say it the same as I do because they were born um, like further up north as well and then we were just talking about how it's nice to hear other people saying things the way that you say things and it's okay to all be different. It really made me smile because the first child was adamant that I was saying it incorrectly. Um, so the next thing I wanted to talk about was a new pattern release, but it's an ebook and it's by Sew Over It. I've got quite a few of their, I think I've got all of their ebooks apart from this one. There are some absolutely beautiful patterns in their ebook. I haven't bought it. I keep hovering on the purchase. I've seen some beautiful makes um, from people that are pattern insiders. Um, really inspiring um, sort of makes from the ebook. It's called the Sew Over It Vintage ebook, and there are lots of different patterns inside. Um, so there are, I've made a list of all the different patterns. So inside, um, so the book is called My Capsule Wardrobe Vintage Dreaming. There are five sewing patterns inspired by past eras from the 1930s to the 1960s. Um, and there's pieces that can you can mix and match or wear together. So there are five different patterns. There are some absolutely beautiful patterns. Like there's a gorgeous coat pattern, which I just fell in love with as soon as I saw it. I'm holding off at the moment because I want to see some more pattern insider makes, just to see what the patterns look like on different bodies. But um, it's on offer at the moment, it's five pounds off, so it's 30 pounds at the moment. There's the Marilyn dress and blouse, which was inspired by Marilyn Monroe. And um, you can mix and match the skirts to choose your favourite shape. You can make the dress, the blouse or the skirt. And that Marilyn dress is absolutely beautiful. Then there's the Miriam set, 
which is a dress and a jacket. I absolutely love the jacket. And it's named after the character from The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Um, and they can be worn together or they can worn, be worn separately. Um, the dress is waisted and comes with the option to pair with a pleated, darted or fuller skirt. I really love the jacket in this set. I'll put pictures in of all of the things that I talk about, but I'll link it down below. Then there's the Rita trousers, which are like a Capri style pants and they're really close fitting. Then there's the Vera dress and blouse. So there's different necklines and sleeve variations. And then my favourite, the Vivian coat, which is inspired with Betty Draper in mind. It's a fit and flare design. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, and then you can either choose to have it with or without welt pocket and there's an optional belt. The ebook comes in UK sizes 6 to 30 and that's broken down into two different size bandings. So there's a 6 to 20, which is a B cup and an 18 to 30, which is a D cup. So for a UK 6, it's a bust measurement of 31 inches, a waist measurement of 24 inches and a hip measurement of 34 inches. And then for a UK 30, it's a 57 inch bust measurement, 50 inch waist measurement and 60 inch hip measurement. Um, in terms of the level, it's aimed at confident beginners and up, but the, there's patterns in the collection for every skill and level. And there are a couple of patterns in there that are quite complex patterns as well. Um, my favourite is the Marilyn dress and then the Vivian um, coat. I just absolutely love the shape of that coat. I think it's absolutely beautiful. So I haven't bought it yet because I am thinking really carefully about whether I actually need any more patterns, but I am very tempted to buy the book just because I love those two patterns. I think they're absolutely stunning. And I think some of the other makes, um, some of the other patterns I might be able to use. Like, I love that cropped jacket as well with the Miriam set. Um, so I think it's quite good value if I was thinking about those three patterns that would definitely sew up. Um, let me know if you have bought the Sew Over It um, new vintage book um, and what your thoughts are on it so far. I'm really enjoying watching um, all the different hashtags fill up with the pattern insider makes so far. And then the next thing I wanted to share with you is a sewing challenge, which is running alongside the sewing bee, because the sewing bee is back on our screen. Yay! Um, I really enjoyed watching it this week. Um, I thought it was really inspiring. It always makes me want to jump onto my sewing machine and sew as soon as I've watched it. It was on at eight o'clock this week, um, which I really enjoyed um, the earlier time, but I'm not sure it's gonna stick with the earlier time. But anyway, um, it's, a, it's a sewing challenge that is being hosted by Sewist in the City and then Ansi Mill Blank. And it's got a hashtag, which is hashtag Sewing Bee Style 22. It's inspired by the Sewing Bee. To enter, you need to post a photo of a garment inspired by something or someone on the Sewing Bee. Um, there are rules, so it has to be a new post and a handmade garment. Um, and the format is in two parts. So for each week, there will be a winner selected from entries for that week. Um, so I think on your post, you need to say what week you are entering your garment into and also include who or what inspired your make. There will be winners selected at random at the end of the challenge from all of the entries as well. You don't have to enter each week. You can choose which weeks inspire you and dip in and out of the challenge as well. You need to make sure that you tag both of the hosts, so that's Sewist and the City, and then Anzi Mill Blank in the post caption. Explain what from the Sewing Bee inspired your post, and also use the hashtag, hashtag Sewing Bee Style 22. So I'm definitely going to include my floor wrap dress um, for the first week of this challenge, and then I'm just gonna see what happens each week and see if I feel inspired. I think I will feel inspired, now, whether I'll have enough time each week to sew, I'm not quite sure, but I'll definitely feel inspired after each episode because I absolutely love seeing what they get up to. My favourite part of the Sewing Bee, um, I really love the pattern challenge. I think the middle challenge, if I was on there, I don't think I would ever go on there because it terrifies me um, and I enjoy being able to sew leisurely. But the second challenge, I think, would really scare me being given something and then being asked to transform it in 90 minutes. Um, I think I would spend quite a lot of that time just panicking. It's always quite interesting what they do end up turning it into. Um, and then the final challenge, which is the fit challenge, I think you can have a lot of fun with that challenge. You've had chance to practice it. You've got a model to fit it on. And I think you can have lots and lots of fun with that challenge as well. Although it can be quite stressful fitting something to somebody else's body shape. So I think my favourite part of it, if I was on there, would be the first challenge where you get the pattern and you get to follow the pattern. 
Having said that, I have got a little bit more confident and a bit more daring with hacking patterns. So maybe I would be okay with the second challenge. So I always like to finish these videos with my sewing plans and I am going to be doing quite a lot of sewing, hopefully tomorrow. So I've cut out a couple of things on top of all the things that I've always got cut out anyway. But I have got two things, no, three things in particular that I would like to get sewn up either tomorrow, this is quite a lot that I'm hoping to get done in one day, but tomorrow or across the week. Um, so I have got the saguaro set and I've used the sort of seersucker gingham fabric that I shared last week, which was this fabric. Loads of people commented or messaged me to say that this fabric would be perfect for the saguaro set. So that's what I've done. I've cut it out and I'm really excited about trialing that pattern um, and seeing how I feel um, it looks and fits on me. So I've cut that out. Then I have cut out my um, Helen's Closet Yanta overalls using this corduroy fabric, um, which is from the um, Fabric Revival. I bought this a while ago and it's going to become some really bright, um, fun Yanta overalls. And I'm really excited about sewing those up. And then... In my little Ziploc bag, I've got the Sabina skirt cut out using the Strawberry Chambre, which I talked about um, a couple of weekends ago. So here it is, all cut out and ready to sew up. And I think that's going to really add. I can see that skirt going really well with a plain white t-shirt, actually. Um, so I'm excited about sewing that up. That comes together fairly quickly. So I might be able to get that sewn up and maybe one other thing tomorrow. And we'll see. Or I've always got loads of plans on the go and I've got my Hevea jacket cut out still waiting for me to sew it up as well. So I might be able to get a start on that over the next week or so. That was everything I wanted to share with you today. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, it'd be really great if you could hit that subscribe button because you get notified of when I bring out my next video. I've got a couple more videos planned. So I'm going to be sharing, I think next week, my I Am Sunshine um jeans and how i got on with adjusting the pattern i've got um i've pulled out six patterns from my stash which i haven't sewn yet so i'm going to be asking for your help with which one i should sew up next and i've also got a video that i filmed i just need to edit it um talking about my five um sort of favorite patterns and why i love them so much thanks so much for watching take care and i'll be back soon with another video bye